Depression affects millions of people worldwide, and while antidepressants can help, they're often not enough. But what if there was a strange, overlooked treatment that could make them work better? Hi everyone, my name is Matthias Hartman. I'm a board certified psychiatric physician assistant, and I make videos on how to improve your mood. In this video, we're diving into the science behind lithium augmentation, a powerful and yet often misunderstood option for treating depression. Lithium is commonly known for treating bipolar disorder, but did you know that it can also be used to boost the effectiveness of antidepressants in people with major depressive disorder, oftentimes just called depression? It's not a first line treatment for depression, but it's been known to work for a long time for depression as an augmentation strategy. An augmentation medication is something that's used on top of the first medicine to help it work better. Here's what we know about how well lithium works for depression. The 2006 STAR-D study, which stands for Sequence Treatment Alternatives to Relieve Depression, which is one of the biggest studies done to evaluate treatments for depression in the everyday setting, like in the office setting, including over 3,500 people found remission rates of 15.9% when lithium was added to an antidepressant treatment. Remission means someone recovers completely. Response, on the other hand, means someone had their depression symptoms decreased by at least 50%. So this data does show that lithium does work as an augmentation strategy for depression. And it's important to note that augmentation with lithium was only used in people in this study who had by definition treatment resistant depression, which means they had failed at least two medication trials before trying this lithium, this lithium augmentation strategy. And what we know from the STAR-D medication trial results is that remission rates decrease a lot with each failed medication trial, especially when we get more in the treatment resistant range of two or more failed meds. What this means is that after someone has failed two medication trials for depression, it becomes a lot harder to get better, statistically speaking. For example, the remission rates going from step two, which was the second line treatment options, were about 30%, and this decreased to around 13% in step three, which was the third line treatment option, which is where lithium comes into play as one of the options. So one of the questions we have to ask is, what would the remission rates have been if lithium was used as a second line treatment option instead of a third line treatment option? Maybe it would have shown better results. It's also important to note that the STAR-D study was not a randomized controlled trial, meaning everyone in the study knew what they were getting. Also, second generation antipsychotics, which are very effective treatments for depression as augmentation strategies to antidepressants, were not used in this study. A 2007 meta-analysis of 10 studies involving 269 people found lithium significantly improved outcomes with an odds ratio of 3.0. 0.11, meaning it was more than triple the odds of a positive response when added to antidepressants. A 2014 meta-analysis of nine randomized controlled trials involving 237 patients showed a response rate of 2.8 times higher when lithium was combined with medications like tricyclic antidepressants, trazodone, phenylzine, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So the findings of these meta-analyses were similar to the one in 2007. In a 2013 study involving 98 patients who hadn't responded to a single antidepressant, lithium augmentation achieved a 89.3 remission rate compared to an 86.2 remission rate for second generation antipsychotics. So this goes back to the point that we talked about earlier, where the STAR-D study used lithium as a third line augmentation strategy. This 2013 study instead used it as a second line treatment option augmentation strategy. So it makes sense why the response rate was better. Alternative options such as switching to another antidepressant or adding a second antidepressant like mirtazapine had much lower remission rates, just 40.7% and 42.9%. Interestingly, bupropion was not used in this study. These numbers highlight lithium's effectiveness when used as an augmentation strategy when the first antidepressant 
hasn't worked. Although we don't fully understand how lithium works, research suggests it inhibits an enzyme called glycogen synthase kinase 3, or GSK3, which helps increase BDNF levels, also known as brain-derived neurotrophic factor levels, a protein that supports neuron health and growth. BDNF is often referred to as brain fertilizer because it helps neurons repair and grow. Similar to how ketamine, an emerging treatment for depression, works by rapidly in increasing BDNF levels. Lithium comes with a range of side effects, including low thyroid hormone levels, which can lead to hypothyroidism, increased parathyroid hormone production, tremors, which are fine shakes, usually in the hands, increased thirst and infrequent urination, and nausea and potential hair loss. It's crucial to monitor lithium blood levels because taking too much can lead to lithium toxicity, which is life-threatening. Symptoms of toxicity include confusion, muscle weakness, and seizures. In the past, lithium was thought to cause significant kidney damage, but treatment methods have improved. Now lithium is prescribed once daily, usually at night, which is safer for the kidneys compared to the older multiple dose regimens. These might sound like a lot of side effects, but every medication comes with certain risks and side effects. And when we're taking into account lithium side effects, we have to compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges. What I mean by that is let's compare lithium, which is an effective augmentation strategy, to second generation antipsychotics, which are also an effective augmentation strategy. Some well-known second generation antipsychotics that work for depression include Rexulti, Abilify, Braylar, Seroquel, and others. A big study in 2020 of almost 40,000 people with depression showed that people started on second generation antipsychotics Seroquel and Abilify were two of the ones that were looked at in this study that I mentioned earlier, showed a 45% increased risk of mortality, meaning there is an increased risk of dying when using these medications. It's not exactly clear why that is, but second generation antipsychotics have certain risks such as abnormal movement disorders like drug-induced Parkinsonism or tardive dyskinesia as well as weight gain, high cholesterol, and increased glucose levels, which can lead to diabetes. By comparison, as noted in a 2021 study comparing second generation antipsychotics with lithium, lithium causes limited amount of weight gain, does not cause any movement disorders like drug-induced Parkinsonism or tardive dyskinesia, and does not have any bad effects on cholesterol or glucose. Next, let's talk about drug interactions and labs we have to monitor when taking lithium. Lithium interacts with common medications, such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, also known as NSAIDs, like ibuprofen and naproxen, which can increase lithium levels, as well as ACE inhibitors, such as lisinopril, often prescribed for high blood pressure, which can also raise lithium levels in the blood. Hydration status plays a major role in how your body processes lithium. Dehydration from caffeine, stimulants, or intense exercise can spike lithium levels, potentially leading to dangerous side effects. Staying properly hydrated is crucial when taking lithium to prevent imbalances and toxicity. Some labs that need to be monitored include a thyroid panel, a complete metabolic panel to look at electrolytes, calcium, glucose, and kidney function, and a lithium blood level to make sure we're in a safe and effective range. While lithium augmentation is a safe and effective strategy for depression, it's not for everyone. The risks must be carefully weighed against the benefits and each person must have a customized approach to treatment to improve their mood. Lithium may sound like an unusual option, but the research behind it speaks for itself. With higher emission rates and potential to boost effectiveness of current antidepressants, it's a treatment worth considering. However, it does come with risks that require careful monitoring. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like this video on 10 subtle signs you might have bipolar depression that most people don't know about. So click on this video on screen and I'll see you over there.